Paolo Freire, an overview. Washing one's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful, not to be neutral. Paolo Freire. Paolo Freire was born on September 19, 1921 in Recife, Pernambuco, Brazil. He was born into a middle-class family, but unfortunately the family was pushed into poverty by the Great Depression. As a result of growing up during this difficult time, Freire developed empathy for the, for the poor. The family emerged from poverty gradually, and uh, Freire was able to attend university. He studied law, philosophy, and the psychology of language. Freire became a teacher of Portuguese and never actually practiced law, even though he had a law degree. He became a government official and eventually worked his way to becoming uh, director of very large scale literacy programs in Brazil. But he ran afoul of the government, especially after the 1964 military coup. Uh, he was found to be controversial and dangerous by them, in particular because of his uh, heavily Marxist-oriented views. In 1968, Freire wrote Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which is probably his most well-known and most popular work. He promoted the views in this book for the remainder of his life and wrote many other books, but this remained his most popular work and most influential, perhaps. Freire died in 1997 at the age of 75. Several themes run through Pedagogy of the Oppressed. First, oppression can be overcome through praxis, which is a balance of theory and action, with an emphasis on action. Freire also rejects the idea of banking as an approach to education. That is to say that students are empty vessels into which education is poured by their teachers or instructors. Finally, Freire focuses on intercommunal dialogue as a means of producing solutions to social problems and the liberation of the oppressed. The following is an expansion of some of the key concepts that are found in the work of Paolo Freire. They are taken from the Freire Institute, which is an institute based at the University of Central Lancashire in the United Kingdom, focused on the work and thought of Paolo Freire. Praxis, action or reflection. It is not enough for people to come together in dialogue in order to gain knowledge of their social reality. They must act together upon their environment in order to critically reflect upon their reality and so transform it through further action and critical reflection. Generative themes. An epoch is characterized by a complex of ideas, concepts, hopes, doubts, values, and challenges in dialectical interaction with their opposites, striving towards their fulfillment. The concrete representation of these constitute the themes of the epoch. For example, we may say that in our society, some of these themes would include the power of bureaucratic control or the social exclusion of the elderly and disabled. In social analysis, these themes may be discovered in a concrete representation in which the opposite theme is also revealed. That is to say, each theme interacts with its opposite. And I would interject here that uh, this, just from my readings in philosophy, is a very strong Hegelian kind of a concept of thesis, anti antithesis, and synthesis that um, is also found to be influential in Marxism and the concept of the class struggle. The Easter experience. Those who authentically commit themselves to the people must re-examine themselves constantly. 
This conversion is so radical as not to allow for ambivalent behavior. Conversion to the people requires a profound rebirth. Those who undergo it must take on a new form of existence. They can no longer remain as they were. Dialogue. To enter into dialogue presupposes equality among the participants. Each participant must trust the other. There must be mutual respect and love, care and commitment. Each one must question what he or she knows and realize that through dialogue, existing thoughts will change and new knowledge will be created. And I think this is a really interesting um, way to approach education that again, the, uh, the concept that you are not pouring knowledge into an empty vessel, that uh, uh, education to a certain extent because of our shared humanity is an interchange, an exchange of dialogue uh, between equals. Conscientization. The process of developing a critical awareness of one's social reality through reflection and action. Action is fundamental because it is the process of changing the reality. Freire says that we all acquire social myths which have a dominant tendency. And so learning is a critical process which de depends upon uncovering real problems and actual needs. So here are two more concepts um, that run through the work of Freire. Codification. This is a way of gathering information in order to build up a picture or codify around we real situations and real people. Decodification is a process whereby the people in a group begin to identify with aspects of the situation until they feel themselves to be in the situation and so able to reflect critically upon its various aspects, thus gathering understanding. It's something like a photographer bringing a picture into focus. And finally, through all of these, the rejection of the banking concept of knowledge, um, and, and that's the what Freire felt to be a wrong-headed concept of education in which knowledge is a gift that's bestowed by those who consider themselves knowledgeable upon those whom they consider to know nothing. Really what you have in Freire is more of an egalitarian uh, kind of journey that the educator undertakes with students and it's, it's a joint uh, journey of discovery uh, through dialogue, uh, through exploration and through revelation. Well, it's not hard to imagine that there would be criticisms of this extremely egalitarian approach to education and its power to transform people and to liberate oppressed people. Uh, and here are a couple of criticisms. Freire's philosophy of man, though idealist and utopian, has certain weaknesses. Freire rarely gets beyond generalities or pieties in developing this philosophy. Though in his literacy work he was involved with real men and women, Freire produces only abstraction when he writes about the human person. And in another criticism, the problem with Freire's social criticism is its simplistic nature. Freire deals only in vague generalities. Oppression is never clearly defined. Freire concentrates on the oppression of the poor, and fails to deal realistically with oppression as it is found at all levels of society. It is a mistake to see only the poor as oppressed and all others as oppressors. I think this latter point is is troubling. It's a little challenging. On the one hand, it's it's one can identify with the sentiment there that uh, to a certain extent, we are all constrained by society, by norms, and we are for, forced into certain roles. And therefore, it's 
not necessarily fair that to say that only the poor are oppressed. On the other hand, um, a focus on the poor, and I think this was Freire's entire uh, orientation and his point, is that you can liberate everyone if you are able to focus on the poor and their problems, because uh, to improve the lot of everyone and to make it a social mobility and the abundant gifts of society available to everyone improves everyone's life, improves society overall, and makes things better for everyone. I think this last thought um, really comes to the fore in the writings and the teachings of someone whom I consider to be a, a, a real heir, spiritual heir to the legacy of Paulo Freire, and that would be Pope Francis. And Pope Francis said, to change the world, we must be good to those who cannot repay us. Um, with Francis, you see a renewed focus on addressing the issues of the poor and the oppressed as the principal means of improving the world for everyone. And I believe that's something um, that really resonates with people who uh, follow the work of Freire. And in fact, Freire's widow met with Francis in 2015. And uh, she, she said that the Pope considered the meeting with me because of the writings of Paolo because of the importance of Paolo for the education of oppressed people, poor people, black people, for women, and for minorities, she said. And so one would think that the work continues.